I'm Jacob. I'm Yuri. And we're going for a drive. A real 2021 Ford Bronco. Wild track without launch control, brake boost. Not bad at all. Horsepower and torque. 310 horsepower, 400 pound-feet of torque from a 2.7 liter EcoBoost V6. And this one only comes in automatic where the smaller motor that is available comes in manual as well. Yeah, and this only comes in 10 speed and I believe it's also shared with the F-150. So why did I call this a real Bronco, Jacob? Well, because we already drove the Bronco Sport and everybody that we've ever talked to that isn't a car person thinks that the Bronco Sport is the Bronco. That's based off just normal Ford SUVs and this is a full-on Jeep Wrangler competitor. It's a body-on-frame truck of an SUV. Yeah, and it's got big tires, a lot of off-road stuff. Should we start with the looks? Yeah, we should because it looks amazing. We have it in wild track spec, which also includes the Sasquatch package, which is an off-roady package. And that's how you get the huge tires and the huge fender flares. Yeah, so this has the 35 inch tires. You get the wider fender flares. You get lifted Bilstein suspension. You also get locking front and rear axles. And this wheel tire combo is as big as a Ford Raptors wheel tire combo. Yeah, exactly the same size, 35 inch tires, 315 7017. And what would be the Continental recommended tire for a new real Ford Bronco? The Terrain Contact AT. I just want to address some of the clicking that you're hearing in the background of the video because it's actually the roof. I think Ford had some issues with some manufacturing of the roof, so I think they're still working on that. They're probably going to solve it, but right now, if you get one of these, you might hear some clicking from what I believe is the roof. Do you like the look of these wheels? I really like the look of these wheels. They fit on a Raptor as well. But what's cool is there are steely versions in different models that you can get. Maybe not all the sizes. Yeah. Because these are bead lockable rims. Yes, they're Rim, bead lock rims. Bead lockable wheels. Bead lockable wheels. Okay, we should move to the front end then. We've got a very similar grill and front end to the Bronco Sport. Yes, except this is the real, real, the cool one that everybody wants because it has the LED headlights and the white Bronco lettering as well. And depending on what trim you get, you're not gonna get like full outline daytime running lights, which could suck. Yeah, because shout out to Kitchener Ford who lent us this vehicle. They actually had another Bronco sitting right on the lot. Different spec did not have LED headlights on the outside, just the inner part where the turn signal is. Yeah, I think it's a must to have this and big shout out to Kitchener Ford. If you need to get a Ford, you're booking a Ford GT. Ooh, you want to get maybe a, a Bronco. A Bronco, use Focus RS. Maybe a Bronco Sport. Mustang Mach 1, you know we love that. Go there. Yeah, sure. Because they hooked us up with this Bronco for review. And we're keeping this one on the road out of respect to them because it's a dealership. Yeah, we don't want to beat up a car that they're selling to someone else. Exactly. Unless it's a press car, in which case we'll beat those cars up. Oh, yeah. But then they'll get sold for like a really good deal. <laughs> yeah, because that's corporate, yes. not a dealership. Okay, so back to the car. Uh, we also popped the hood on this one. Sorry, truck, because everyone's going to get angry. Uh, the engine bay looks kind of crazy. Just a bunch of stuff everywhere, no plastic cover, which is kind of cool. Yeah, kind of cool, but also kind of like, eh. Yeah. <laughs> and then on the hood, we also have these kind of markers for where our fenders are. You can also tie stuff to them, tie them to the roof, use it as like an off-roady thing, which will basically like keep tree branches and stuff away from the windscreen. And then we got a big beefy metal bumper up front, so I'm sure we can hit a bunch of stuff. And there's a whole bunch of Bronco bolts there too. Yes, and then there's also accessories that you can get onto this one. You can also get like a whole bush bar and stuff like that. We don't have a front plate on here, thankfully, because they don't look very good with front plates apparently. Yeah, I saw that. The front end looks really, really good absolutely killed it yeah it looks great i did drive by a jeep i gave him a wave he waved back but then secretly under the door i gave him one of these yeah yeah give him the middle finger i don't know i'm just kidding <laughs> and then uh from the side view this is a four door you can also get these in two door yeah it's really nice that you can get every single trim level in two or four door even though there are so many confusing trim levels and then roof wise we've got the bronco version of the freedom tops because these two things can come off that can come off and then the whole back part can come off. You can also get like a soft cloth version that kind of comes over the top. And it's pretty cool because it is like right in line with how a Jeep works. Exactly, they, they saw what Jeep was doing, copied it and just made it better. It's like, you know, the thing like you're copying your homework kind of thing. What, what, what was your theory that their uh, Ford's getting back at uh, Jeep and 
dodge for the T-Rex. Yeah, because the TRX kind of beat out the Raptor, at least in its current form. And then onto the rear end, we've got really cool outline taillights. Love them. Yeah, the outline taillights look really good. They kind of look Jeep-ish, just like pretty much like the Wrangler. And then we have the spare tire on the back, exactly like Wrangler. And then we got the camera in the reverse sticking out of that rear tire compartment, which makes for a very clear 360 stitching and reverse camera, which is very nice. And we also have a hard button for the front camera that we can use while we're driving, which is great. Yeah, having a front camera button is like the best feature for big trucks. So overall, the looks of this thing are stunning. Uh, yeah, I would say they killed it. It is a very good Jeep competitor that looks different enough and suits the Bronco name much better than the Bronco Sport, but the Bronco Sport also looks really good and will trick a lot of people who don't realize what a real Bronco is. Yeah, but this has so much road presence. Like, it just, it looks perfect in the spec with this color as well. Yeah, I'd need to see some in real life without the Sasquatch package and the big wheels to the side, but I think... Uh, if, I saw one without it and you have to get this. If you don't go for this, yeah, it's like... You ah, have to. Yeah. And this also offers 35 inch tires from the factory, unlike Jeep, but they also just started recently offering that as like an aftermarket package. But anyways, I'm gonna send this into Cliche Corner and see what this is like. Yeah, I mean, we're on big 35 inch tires. It handles like a truck. Like, it's way better than a Wrangler on road. This is actually shockingly good compared Just to a Wrangler. For normal driving and whatever, but when we sent it in the Mojave and the diesel one, I feel like those sends through Cliché were very good. Very, very good with the Rubicon package. Through Cliché, but for daily driving, this is so much better. Like this feels like a regular car, much less of a body on frame SUV. And then this one does not have lane keep for the highway stuff. It has lane departure assist or whatever, so it's not lane centering. Nah, that kind of sucks, but I guess it's kind of understandable, but then also Jeep's not gonna have that either, so. Right, but this has adaptive cruise, which is really nice. Yeah. So we're cruising at about 50 kilometers an hour, 27 miles an hour, I actually know the conversion. Floor it for me. Downshift lag, but that turbo picks up pretty damn good. And that's in sport mode, which puts you into four automatic, but you can go to two high once you enter sport mode. Yeah, so when it's in two high, it's in rear wheel drive, just like a truck. But that sound, can we talk about that for a second? Because it's very rumbly. Ugh, it's not very good. It's like they're trying to make that like V8 kind of sound. Yeah, out of I a get V6 some, you again. get some grumble or some rumble. No, it sounds horrible. I think all of the Ford EcoBoost en engines sound like trash. They're gonna do a V8 though, right? Uh, did, they, did they say that or did well, no? They they keep hinting at it, but it's because like Jeep did the exactly the V8, which we haven't driven yet. Yes, which they conveniently announced on the day that they were doing Bronco stuff. Jeep knows what they're doing, and this 10 speed is actually pretty good, pretty smooth. I find that it like gear hunts like a little bit, but not really too bad. That like it's totally fine for daily driving, and I just I feel like the torque really pulls you through. It'll drop you down to the correct gear pretty quickly to get you into that torque band. Okay, and then how do you like the paddles? Uh, there are none, so we do have a button shifter, which is a really cool Bronco logo, and you can also see a little American flag down here, which is a pretty nice touch. But then if you wanted to shift that red line, you would use your normal tack, right? Uh, yes, our, uh, it basically looks like a fuel gauge tack. It's uh, so weird. Tack. But you know what? That is some really cool graphic design on the gauges and everything. Yeah, there is no, at least that we could find, no, there's no circular regular tack in here. And let's end off your driving portion with the drive modes and more of that cool graphic design in the gauge cluster. And by drive modes, you mean goat modes, right, Yuri? The go greatest of all time modes. Go anywhere. <laughs> go over any terrain modes. Go over any terrain okay, modes. Okay, so there's a lot of them. Uh, all the graphics are really cool. I'm just going to show you guys right now. The one that really stands out to us, at least, is the sport mode, which has what looks to be a burning earth. Yeah, because of emissions. <laughs> yeah, I'm not really sure, but uh, <laughs> that's, pretty that's, funny that's, graphic. That's kind of evil. Yeah, it's interesting. Seems, seems like more of a Volkswagen thing to do. <laughs> all right, let's get you into this car, into the driver's seat. Sport mode, too high, traction off, going to floor it. Send it. Still not that I got off the line. It'd probably be better with a brake boost, but then it would probably just start doing a burnout. Yeah, it wasn't very good right off the line, but the initial it, it kick, picks up. It's exactly. got a good amount of power for a big four-door SUV yeah, you, slash you, truck. You really feel that 400 pound-feet of torque just a little bit after. So now moving on to this interior, it is a very nice layout. When you look at our infotainment and gauge cluster and all our buttons, we've got hard buttons for pretty much everything. The infotainment is great, new Ford stuff. We've got our diff locking buttons up here. And then we also have a little quarter 20 slot 
so you could put like a GoPro or a phone holder with USB power there to power whatever accessory you're using. And you can also get like an accessory rail so you can have like a bunch of things up there as well, which is smart afford to do that. Multiple GoPros. Yes, and then we have some handles up here, which is great for off-roading. Yeah, we're getting in and out of the car, I guess. I guess the driver doesn't need to be holding <laughs> onto the handle a while. But what I really want is a USB up here so that we can have a dash cam there instead of running a cable up your windshield. Yeah, that makes sense. And we have a bunch of auxiliary switches right up here, which remind me of another uh, Ford product. Don't say Raptor, don't say Raptor, don't say Just like a Ford Raptor. I didn't say it. And then this also has a crawl mode. You push this button in the middle here of your GOAT selector, and then you can set the speed to how fast you wanna go. You can go like one kilometer an hour. Yeah, which is pretty cool because on the manual transmission, you actually have a crawler gear indicated by a C. And then down here, we have a wireless charger. We also have a USB port and a USB-C. This does have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay can optionally enable wireless, which is really cool. And then we also have this Bronco plaque down here, which looks like the front end of the grill, which also looks like the headlight for the engine start stop button. Yeah, and that plaque is cool. It's like made in Dearborn or something. Yep. And then our cup holders, perfect. Lots of room for like, any size of cup. And what about our visors? <laughs> These okay. large masks. It's gigantic, three, two, one. Yes, wow. Full pass. And the most surprising part, an amazing turning radius. Shockingly good for a four-door. But I guess if you're off-roading, you need to have good turning radius. Right, but the two-door would probably be even better, so. And back to the interior, do you like the material of this dashboard here? It's like kind of off-roady, kind of cool. Yeah, I think everything in here is built for being able to be cleaned easily for getting it dirty off-road. And I like how it says Bronco here in front of the passenger at the airbag thing. Then with these doors, it's got the same kind of materials here, and there's a thing that says lift. Why does it say lift, Jacob? Well, because these doors are removable, just like they are on a Wrangler, but you can actually store these in this SUV, unlike a Wrangler, because there are optional accessory door bags so that you don't scratch your paint. So you basically just put it over the door, unbolt two hinges, undo one little electrical part. Which is cool because you have to push the flat back and it unclips, which is way easier than it is in the Wrangler. Yes, and then you just lift the door off and that's it. And there are no frames on these doors, so the window goes all the way down and doesn't like get damaged by anything. And that's why it fits in here. Where, it, the, where the Wrangler has the frame. And these also don't have the mirrors on the doors, which is another part of that, so. So you don't have to ride around with no mirrors when you take your doors off. Another reason is why they fit inside. It's, it's brilliant. Great engineering problems from the competitor. Yeah, it's good that they could have studied the Jeep Wrangler for like the last 50 years and finally solved these, all these problems. <laughs> <laughs> but the windshield doesn't fall down. That's right, yeah. Other problems that they also solved, it's also really quiet in here. Compared to a Jeep, it's not like quiet compared to a normal SUV, but they also solved the steering where it's not like wandering everywhere. It's just, it's really nice on the highway. Even on like all normal roads, a little bit of like movement on the roads, like it doesn't drift like a Jeep with big, knobby tires would. Yeah, like a Wrangler, like even though a Wrangler even close. would have 33s. Yes, when I say Jeep, I only mean Wrangler. Yes, when, when Rubicon. It comes to this review. Yes, this would be a comparable to a Rubicon. But like any Wrangler. Yeah. I do not mean a uh, Patriot. That's or, right. Or any other Jeep yeah. products or Renegade or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and while I'm driving, I can comfortably put my elbows on the armrest and touch the wheel. And these seats are very padded very comfortable. Yes, very soft, decently bolstered, and there's actually a ton of room back there. I fit completely behind myself at six foot one and a half. And then if we fold the seats down, it moves the bottom part forward and then makes it like a flat load floor. We can't do a box test today because we don't have time, but it looks like there is a ton, ton, ton of room back there. Yeah, so we owe you guys a future box test in this vehicle. All right, now I'm cruising in normal mode. I'm gonna floor it. You don't like the sound of that? No, it's just like. It, that sounds good. I like. I really like the sound of this. But then there's like a whole bunch of like air sound I hear. Yes. <laughs> it's just all the eco boost. Just. That's it. Hey man, soon it's just gonna be only electric. Yeah, but at least it won't sound like that because they can make it sound like anything. But then we've already heard the Mach E, so. so it's uh, gonna be the Bronc E. <laughs> yeah. Bronchiosaurus. Ooh. Well, there's gonna be the Warthog apparently, which is the Raptor version, but now there's rumors that they're just gonna call it the Bronco Raptor anyways, and they're gonna turn Raptor into a sub thing. Anyways, we'll see. Whatever, who cares? It's all gonna be fun. Oh yeah. And if you wanna tow with this, 3,500 pounds, plenty of jet skis. And then some other things inside, this does have ambient lighting, which is cool. 
We do have our window switches in the middle, just like a PT Cruiser. <laughs> yeah, but they're mounted reverse because you're looking down at them, so they're upside down. It's kind of funny. And a Wrangler, but you need to do that so that like it's not attached to the doors when you take them off. Exactly. The trunk does open from the side, and then the glass goes up, which is pretty, I guess, normal. It's exactly like a Wrangler. Yeah. And then we have tie-downs, which are lassoes or lassos. Yeah, because you tie it down. Ah, Bronco, so, yeah. yeah. So that's pretty much it. I think it's time we get to the price. Well, the cheapest Bronco that you can get in base form starts at 40,499 Canadian. And this one is $69,039. For how hot this car is right now and for how expensive Jeeps are getting, kind of like makes sense. This is the top trim. This is almost as expensive as you can get it because you can actually get a lower trim slightly more expensive if you accessorize it correctly. And specking these out are very confusing, right? Extremely confusing. So this one includes the Sasquatch package, which is an option on lower trims. And that changes your final drive as well because it's better gearing for off-roading. Right, and then you also get the really cool fridge magnet thing on the side, which actually has a Sasquatch in it, which is pretty awesome. And then there's a trim below this called the Badlands, which is technically actually slightly more off-road capable even with the Sasquatch package. Yeah, very confusing. Hopefully they chill that out in the future. Yeah, but it is cool because they're giving you lots of options because people that buy these probably want lots of and options. They but do it, a lot of customization too. Yes, it's just it's just a little bit too much. And if you're shopping for a new Ford Bronco and you live in the United States, click the True Car link below. There's a discount when using the Straight Pipes link. You can also shop for used Fords using True Car. And if you live in Canada, there's a Car Help Canada link below. So overall, this versus a Wrangler Rubicon. Jacob, which one would you take right now, four-door versus four-door? Well, Yuri, this is the first SUV that I've ever actually wanted to own because I don't like SUVs. So you would take this over a Wrangler four-door Rubicon? 100%. Would you take this over a hypothetical, we don't know how it drives, V8 Wrangler? I don't know. I really don't like the sound of this, but I think the look is enough to sway me over that V8, surprisingly. I think all the infotainment and stuff is probably better than Jeeps are right now. And the way this drives on the road, which is primarily how I would drive this, where my wife would drive it, this is so much better. And I feel like for the way that they entered the market with this and didn't screw anything up, we kind of, you kind of got to, you know, pick this right now. This is very cool. And I don't think there's anything really wrong with it at all. No. So let us know what you guys think of this new Ford Bronco. Is it that much better than the Bronco Sport? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Yuri, let everybody know. <laughs>